Here we are back in the studio and we are in week two of the Vintage Elements Quilt Project. Uh, I took a vintage quilt top. Uh, I got this one online at an online auction. Red and green, as you can see, are really one of my favorite quilt combinations. I love this time period and this color combination. Of course, it reminds me of Christmas and Christmas is my favorite holiday. Um, this particular one on the wall, which I don't know if you can see from there, that's one of my favorite ones. My mom got me that one year for my birthday. It had come up at a local auction. That was a completed quilt. And I went to the auction in person and I couldn't, uh, couldn't keep up with the person who was bidding on it. So I lost the quilt. And I had taken a lot of pictures of the quilt and some measurements because I thought about trying to reproduce it. But a few weeks later, I was looking at an online auction and the same quilt came up, the exact same quilt. And I was talking to my mom about it and she got it for me for my birthday. So I love that particular one. But I bought this top um, at an online auction and I wanted to quilt it. And I've chosen probably three distinctly different quilting designs, digital quilting designs, but they're all from a collection called Twirly Girl. And so we're on block two. It's the white square block in between the stars. And then there's a third block that has sort of a green pinwheel. We're gonna use an alternate block for that. Uh, technically there will be more blocks in here, but visually they will look the same. So I'm using a square block feathered for this center here. And on the side and the top and bottom, where we have those partial or half square triangles. There are other designs in that collection that are half of the feathered block I'm gonna be using. So I'll be using those in the corners on the edges to fill in the space. By the time this is finished, it will be fairly heavy, heavily quilted. Uh, each one of these stars, well, I was able to quilt about two and a half to three stars on one bobbin just to give you an idea of how much thread it was using. Now I am using 100% cotton on this particular project. Normally I would use isocord, but I kind of just wanted to go, uh, since it's a vintage quilt, and use a thread that would have been appropriate for the time. And cotton thread doesn't seem to wind as tightly on the spool or as compactly as some of the other types of thread and so I don't think you're getting as much thread on the bobbin as you would if, if I were using isocord or something. So that explains for some of the uh, having to refill the bobbin uh, but some of it is just a very heavily stitched quilt uh, pattern. Now I did echo on the star on the inside and I echoed all of the feather points on the red star also so that also contributed to the thread usage. But we're going to show you how we uh, load the square on this white section. I've changed to a off-white thread for this uh, part of the quilting. So uh, I'm ready to go. And you're going to see that this part of the process is going to go much quicker than the red because I'm not having to do any uh, stitch in the ditch or anything remotely close to stitch in the ditch because my stitch in the ditch is really just... Uh, kind of visiting close by the ditch. It's not really stitching in it. My patience level isn't that great for that. So we're gonna go ahead and pull you in closer so you can see the IQ tablet and show you what the design looks like. This one is gonna stitch out pretty much the size that it comes up uh, once I show the IQ what size the block is. So this is gonna go a lot faster for me. At this point, I'm going to <clears throat> open up the Urban Elements website. We are back at the Urban Elements website and as you can see <clears throat> again I'm starting off at the design wall. The design wall lets you uh, upload a photo of your own of a particular quilt project that you're working on and then go through some of the uh, well all of the designs that are on the Urban Elements website and audition them on the quilt block. So as you can see from last week we have this vintage quilt top an image of it it's just a portion 
but this is all I need. This has already been loaded. Uh, I loaded it by using the browse button to find it on my computer. And then once I found it and the file was selected, I uploaded it and that's how I got the vintage quilt image off of my computer onto the Urban Elements website to audition the quilt pattern. The first block that we did was this twirly girl and I tried to, it was this pinwheel that worked the best on the actual quilt and we can bring that up and it looks a little bit funny here but I assure you once we got it sized correctly it actually fit onto the block and uh, so I've already stitched out all of these I'm not going to position all of these on here I'm just going to do a rough uh, rendition by clicking on add to canvas I can continue to uh, see what this looks like over the whole quilt. Here on the select uh, thread color, you can change the thread color and that allows you to see what different colors would look like on the quilt. Um, I don't mess with it too much, but uh, it has a wide, wide range of colors that you could use uh, the full spectrum. So on this second week, what we're going to be working on are um, this alternating block and to get rid of these I can just drag them right off of the screen. So our second block is going to be this block that fills in in between the stars both the side and the top and bottom. I'm not going to be doing this green block this week that'll be the final video for this particular project but I've already uh, added this design from Twirly Girls and if we just go up to the search engine, I can type in Twirly Girl and it will pull up all of the designs using that. Now we have the square and the half square triangle. I'll be using these to fill in the sides. And um, I actually will bring in both the uh, triangle block one and block two and see which one I like best. But it's the twirly girl block four that we're going to be using today. And to get it onto the design wall, all you have to do is click this D and that will take it to the design wall. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on both of these and add those as well. And now we can go ahead and play with those. We only see three blocks here, but if you use the little uh, cursor, it will take you to the additional blocks. And I don't have, well, I guess I have it here. So if I wanted to add this to canvas, I could bring this down and see how that would fit. I also could try this one and it has a little square up here that allows you to rotate the block. Now I can't see it. Oh, here it is. So, oh, I had it right the first time. So we could drag that in and see how that one looks. I could do either one of those and then for the actual block that we're going to be doing the whole block I have uh, this particular one so you can see that this one almost fits in there perfectly without me even having to adjust it here on the uh, design wall but I could just keep popping these in to get an idea of what those look like. If you wanted to, you could, as you're auditioning these, each time you add one to the quilt, you could change the thread color and see what different thread colors look like.
Not that I would do that in these colors, certainly, but you can see how this process works. So it's a great way to audition uh, quilt design on your actual quilt. Um, right he from here, you could add to the cart if you don't have this design and you could uh, go ahead and purchase it. If it's not one that you like, you could go ahead and delete it. I will delete this particular one here because we've already finished with that and it will bring it up next without it. So I will be bringing uh, these three blocks with my USB stick to the IQ and we'll go out and get these loaded and then uh, we can start stitching these out. And I anticipate these to stitch out much quicker. One, because it's a simpler block, it's also smaller. I don't know if I mentioned last week, but these stars were requiring almost a full bobbin for every three stars. So it was a pretty heavy quilting design. But I like that it's going to really stabilize this quilt and it will help it last in perpetuity. So we're going to go ahead and get back outside and um, we'll get started on doing these alternate blocks. Here I am at the beginning, the uh, main menu, and what I'm going to do is select Design Sew Quilt. I'm going to start new and yes, we're starting new. I'm going to be working on a block pattern today, so I select bar, block and mark on quilt. Now I'm going to move the needle to the four points of this square that I'm going to be stitching in. Once I get to the first one, I'll hit OK. I'm going to go to the second one and hit OK. And you can see that we're creating a design on the IQ tablet. It's replicating the size and shape of this block onto the program. And I've gotten uh, one, two, three, four points done. All I have to do now is say close block. And it will make a perfect uh, square there. Or it's not really a diamond. It's a square on point. And so I'm finished. I can hit finished. The IQ now knows that that's the exact size of my block. And I'm going to go uh, to the block that I'm going to be using, which is Twirly Girl Block 4. I also have the number 5 there indicating that this originated as a 5-inch block if I need to know that. So I have selected it. I can hit OK. And you can see that it comes up almost perfectly inside that square. So now all I have to do is hit Finished. And I want to sew the quilt select the first pattern. Well, there really is only one pattern, so I can select that anywhere and hit continue. And sew quilt. It's going to move to a starting location and pull up the bottom thread. And I'm going to go ahead and hit continue and start. Once that got started, I went ahead and put the thread here at the bottom. The total time on this particular block is only two minutes. So in two minutes, it will be time for me to shift to another one of these blocks and get going to a different location. I think while I'm down here, I'm going to see if I have room to stitch out the bottom row of blocks. That will be with the uh, Hasper Triangle unit. But I'm going to let you just see what this one looks like as it's stitching out. Next, I'm going to go ahead and sew one of the uh, half square units right here in this block. So I'm going to go ahead and move the camera so you can see the top of the IQ screen. Okay, we're back at the design quilt uh, main menu. So we'll hit design sew, start new. We're going to replace what we were working on. 
We're going to do another block pattern and we're going to mark on the quilt. This time I just have the three points. So I'm going to go ahead and select those. And from here I can hit close block and it will create that triangle unit. So let's see. I have these two uh, half square triangle units I could use. I'm going to try this one first. And it looks perfect in there. I don't really have to make any adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and hit finished. And I think I'm going to do these all across the bottom. I think I might use the other style on the two sides just to give a little bit of variety. So I'm going to hit finished, sew quilt. We're selecting the pattern to sew. Sew quilt. And it's going to move to the start position. It just did my first stitch to let me pull up my bobbin thread and I hit start. Now this one is going to take less than one minute. Just that fast we finished one of these uh, triangle units so I'm going to do the other three on the bottom here and then we can start going up the sides. I haven't been sewing today I'm going to wait till tomorrow. I actually have some work to do upstairs but some of these blocks have a little bit of uh, excess fabric because of the way that it's quilted out the way that it was pieced. So I'm just going to get uh, some of these blocks that I'm going to be working on tomorrow uh, wet with some spray starch. And I have heard that this can sometimes tighten up uh, excess fabric in a block. So I just got these uh, nice and damp with uh, just regular spray starch. I'm going to let this sit until tomorrow, let it dry out in the studio and um, we'll see if it makes a, a noticeable difference or not. Uh, either way, I'm going to quilt over it, so if it works, it works. Um, if you were in a time crunch, you may not be able to do this, but I don't have to work on this today, so I'm going to go ahead and let it rest a day. Well, I let the quilt top dry overnight where I put the starch on it, and I can still see some excess fabric here, but it does look a little bit better. Of course, I have to quilt over this, so I'm not going to mind uh, if I get a little bit of puckers on here. It's a vintage quilt, and um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. We're going to start uh, continue doing these blocks that we were doing uh, the last time I filmed. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going. Okay, we're going to do another one of the blocks. Design sew quilt, start new, do I want to, I already have a work in progress, do I want to replace it? Yes. Erase permanently? Yes. Reset time? Yes. Block pattern, because we're working on a block. Mark it on the quilt. I'm going to do three of the four points. Top, left, bottom, right. And I'm going to let it connect or close the block by itself. I'm finished. I'm going to bring my pattern in. And I don't know if you uh, can tell, but on this particular block, 
there is a little uh, point and a line that goes through the middle only on the horizontal on this block I could rotate it and have it go on the horizontal now that's the vertical um, the bottom row had the vertical I've already done one block and I have it on the horizontal for this row so I'm going to continue doing horizontal for this row and then flip it for the next it's really when you see the finished quilting you really almost can't see the difference so it doesn't really really matter I don't think too much uh, we'll see if you can notice it when the block is finished but I'm going to go ahead and hit finished and we're going to sew quilt select what pattern well there's only one pattern on this one so we'll continue sew quilt and it's going to move to its start position and uh, allow me to pull up the bottom thread and I'll hit continue and start as that started stitching then I went ahead and trimmed my threads and you'll see that it's only about a minute and nine seconds to finish this particular block So I'm just going to go ahead and let this minute and nine seconds uh, sew out. I am using the cream on cream thread here. Uh, as you've seen many times, I don't usually like a really high contrast thread. Especially on something like this where I knew I was going to come up on some issues with the blocks being different sizes, there being some excess fabric. Um, I didn't want to amplify those mistakes with the overall quilt, so it will have a very traditional look and the, any mistakes that are inherent in a vintage quilt won't be so evident. just two minutes per block. I will finish the rest of these blocks fairly quickly today and then I can get the quilt set up for the third phase which will be these pinwheel blocks that alternate and then I'll have to do some probably some free motion work on the little border uh, just because I don't have a design that's going to fit in there. previous video uh, entitled Introduction into Pantograph Grids, I illustrated how you could use a paper panto block design and set it into a block. Basically what you would be doing is making, uh, moving the needle just as I am here and plotting the force for the block. Here I'm doing it digitally. With the pantograph grids, you would be moving the needle over each of these points and then marking with a dot with the dry erase marker onto the pantograph grids that would indicate where the block was. So when you slid the block design in underneath the pantograph grids, you would be able to sew it out and it would sew out in a specific location. Just as I'm doing here digitally, you could also do the same thing with the paper panto. That would work with the feathered star, the alternate block, the setting triangles on the side. It's all exactly the same method of plotting the force here digitally in the back of the pantograph grids using the dry erase marker. So this could be done whether you're using digital or paper pantos. Perfect timing. <clears throat> this particular block I am uh, rotating every other row. Uh, mostly because it was a mistake, but I don't really believe in mistakes. I just think it's a design choice. So I'm repeating it every vertical row. One is horizontal, the other vertical. And all you have to do, IntelliQuilter pulled the block in and it could pull it in on any rotation. 
but all I have to do is touch rotation and take my finger and move it and uh, now I can go ahead and hit move a little bit I think I'll move it down just a hair but it's just that easy to use and hit finished and now I'm back in line with this particular row where these little heads are on the horizon so I can hit finished sew quilt select first pattern continue sew quilt and it's going to move to my start point let me pull up the thread and I can go ahead and start and it's just that easy to rotate well that does it for me for week two I have all of these alternating blocks quilted uh, not a lot of them but a few of them have some pretty good puckers in it and I was kind of expecting that with the variable sizes of the blocks this was originally hand pieced uh, they always say that hand quilting would quilt some of that out I'm not sure if that's true or not uh, to be perfectly honest but um, I'm not gonna let the puckers diminish my joy of the quilt um, I'm also noticing as I'm quilting it that there are quite a few vintage age spots on this quilt and so probably once I get the entire quilt completely quilted and the binding on it with the sleeve I might get a package of that vintage soak or vintage textile soak and let the quilt soak in there to uh, see if we can release some of those uh, vintage stains but I'm not really really worried about it I did try to use the spray starch technique to reduce the size of some of the puckering. Um, I didn't find a huge difference with that and uh, because there was a 24 hour drying period um, I didn't try it on every single row so um, that is it for week two. In the next video we're going to be working on these pinwheel blocks and the design I have two designs and I may actually use both just because um, I downloaded them but uh, they're both kind of like frames they will frame the pinwheel and then once the entire quilt is finished I have to go around and echo out these leave applique in the outside border I don't have a design that I could easily sew to fill the space if I don't quilt it it will look funny because everything else is fairly heavily quilted so I'm either going to do some little freehand feathers around the leaves or just echo the leaf shapes and I might echo the pinwheel also just to fill in a little bit where that uh, border element doesn't completely fill in just so the quilt is evenly quilted and it is very heavily quilted I've been changing the bobbin very very uh, often on this quilt uh, so it has a ton of quilt in it that's one of the uh, downsides of machine quilting the more heavily you quilt something with machine quilting it generally becomes a little bit stiffer the more you quilt something with hand quilting the softer it becomes and um, that is just because machine quilting is a two threads top and bottom and they interlock so it's really double the amount of quilting thread in there and also with hand quilting you're constantly uh, handling the thread and the quilt and I think it's just, just the process of hand quilting softens things but I certainly can't afford to have uh, all of my quilts hand quilted I can't afford to have any hand quilted um, but that's it for today uh, come back next time when we'll be uh, wrapping up this particular project and um, I don't have any other vintage tops that I'm going to quilt but I do have another vintage idea for after this uh, process is finished so um, if you happen to enjoy this video please like and share it and also if you think somebody else might uh, learn something from it uh, share the video please and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time here in the studio.